on our website. I'd like to welcome everybody to the 10th Crocodile Specialist Group Virtual Drone Workshop. Um, I hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. Uh, this is our, as I said, 10th chat. Uh, we've had very interesting speakers throughout this year, and uh, we hope to continue these going into next year and leading up to the uh, meeting next October. Our speaker today is uh, Brinky Desai, who is a PhD student at Ahmedabad University in Gujarat. Uh, she'll be presenting on development of an automated biometric system for individual identification of mother crocodile. Uh, Brinky's co-authors on this work are Supan Shah, Soham Mukherjee, Kiyur Joshi, Manish Dat, and Ratna Gosal. And uh, Brinky's been um, doing research on ecological adaptations of mother crocodile populations across three diverse habitats in Gujarat. And I will let Brinky begin her talk. Thank you. Uh Hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, so uh, from my team of authors, two members are present here uh, and I would like to introduce them. Uh, Supan Shah, who is the intern uh, in this project and he is the person behind the codes. And uh, my supervisor, Dr. Ratna Ghoshal. Hi everyone. Good morning. Hi, Raymond. Hi. Yeah, I guess Walter sir also joined. Shall I uh, share the screen? Let's go ahead and share the screen. Yeah. Is it visible to all? Yes, you can go into presentation mode. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, my today's topic is on uh, development of an automated biometric system for individual identification of mugger crocodiles using a deep learning uh, approach. Uh, just a general background of the species of crocodilians that are found in India, which is gharial, saltwater crocodile and mugger. And out of these two species, saltwater and mugger are known to get into conflict with humans. And uh, out of these two, uh, mugger crocodile is my study uh, species or model organism. Mugger crocodile is distributed across several states in India. And uh, looking at uh, Gujarat, uh, red spots and the blue spots are the places in Gujarat where mugger crocodile population is found. And blue dots are my study sites for my PhD project. And Uh, I'll introduce my study sites. Uh, that is Kutch, Anand, and Vadodra. Ahmedabad is my base where my university is. And from there, Anand is 75 kilometers away. And then Baroda is 45 kilometers away from Anand. And Kutch is 400 kilometers away. Now, population in Kutch lives in semi-arid desert with minimum human interference. And the population of crocs is 94, which was a very old survey that was done in 1997. Recent survey that has been done by Forest Department and Mahim Pandi Wildlife Organization has uh, reported approximately 800 uh, muggers in the region. Then comes the Anand, which is a lentic ecosystem. And people are highly tolerant towards crocodile in this region. As you can see that a lady is washing clothes with, uh, with her child. And uh, there's a mugger swimming uh, in that uh, same pond. And the population here is approximately uh, 300 crocodiles, uh, according to the census done by Voluntary Nature Conservancy in 2019. And then there is Paroda which is a lotic ecosystem with a very high conflict and people are not tolerant towards crocodile here and there are several uh, rescues and conflicts that takes place in Baroda um, very frequently and the population here is approximately 500 which was done uh, which 
uh, was carried out uh, in a census in 2019 by Pagdand organization and local forest department. The uh, population of Kutch is geographically distant from Anand and Baroda and uh, the population in Anand and Baroda is a migratory population. Now the overarching goal of my study is to understand the ecological adaptation of mugger crocodile population across three different habitats within Gujarat, which I will be doing by understanding their reproductive behavior, which will involve mating, nesting and parental care and via endocrine physiology uh, through using non-invasive methods via SCAT sampling, which I will do for reproductive hormones that will involve progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, and stress indicating hormone, which will involve uh, cortisol. Now, in order to monitor uh, reproductive, uh, sorry, uh, in order to monitor reproductive physiology, uh, long-term sampling of focal individual needs to be conducted over a long period of time. Uh, so for focal individuals, uh, it is necessary to tag animals. And for crocodilians so far, uh, there are invasive as well as non-invasive methods. Invasive methods involve cattle tags and uh, various kinds of radio tags. And identification of focal animal using non-invasive method you, uh, involves using body marks, breeding sites and body patterns. Now there are various methods for non-invasive sa sampling that have been used to identify focal animals, such as visual patterns in tigers, zebras, giraffe, nose prints in cattle industry, iris pattern, retinal pattern in several bird species, facial recognition for um, primates, ear vessel patterns for bats, bite marks and movement patterns, uh, bite marks for mammals and movement patterns for fish. Uh, on the basis of this, uh, we were, since our study is to understand uh, reproductive physiology non-invasively, we wanted to develop a method uh, through which we can non-invasively tag muggers. And for that, uh, we are trying to uh, develop a biometric recognition tool to identify individual mugger based on their dorsal body patterns uh, using a deep learning approach. So uh, while doing literature review, uh, one of the study by Dr. Sergio uh, was done uh, to identify individual American crocodile using the body skew patterns, uh, which he did by capturing 110 crocodiles uh, on, uh, in Co on Coiba Island in Panama. And uh, their study showed that the probability of finding two crocodiles with the same pattern on the Koiba Island was 0.0002%, which is very less, which means according to this study, American crocodile in a group of 3,47,222 individuals will have an ident uh, identical skewed uh, pattern. Based on this, we collected preliminary data for mugger crocodile in Baroda and in Kutch. And uh, I manually uh, counted the skews on the uh, on the transverse lines and lateral lines of the dorsal body, and this table shows count of three different crocodiles for uh, transverse line 13, 14, 15, and 16, which can very visibly see that how different the skewed pr are present on their dorsal body is. And we found out that out of 20 crocodiles that we had in preliminary survey, all of them had different body patterns. Uh, which brings us to developing uh, this method using a deep learning approach or using a deep learning algorithm. And the objective of the study is uh, to create a catalog of different mugger individuals from the three selected study sites in Gujarat and develop an algorithm using drone images to re-identify them. And the main criteria for my objective is to individually identify crocodile across diverse habitats. And the second is unknown crocodile should be identified as an unknown crocodile. Uh, for this, uh, I followed, uh, we had few steps uh, generated uh, before starting the work. First, we needed to standardize protocol for data collection using drone. Second, uh, approximately 10,000 image, 10, plus images uh, will require from minimum 100 individuals for model training. 
Uh, data processing will involve labeling classes, extracting frames, calculating similarity scores in consecutive frames. Then model training using multiple combination of split for training data sets such as 90-10 split, 80-20 split, 70-30 split. And then augmentation using various treatment for testing uh, like bright and dark augmentation, blur and normal augmentation, clockwise and anti-clockwise augmentation, zoom in and zoom out, uh, plus five and plus minus points, and ang different angles uh, that we use for augmentation. After this, multi-way comparison of treatments to uh, access the robustness of the models uh, will be done, and then development of a field-friendly app for identification of individual magar. Now, coming to standardizing the method for uh, data collection, uh, data was collected using uh, DJI Mavic 2 Zoom. A flight was taken from start point to the end point uh, along the periphery of water body, and the same site. Uh, so, when I start my survey, uh, one start point is selected and one end point is selected and i do not fly my drone again to uh, avoid the taking data from the same individuals once the crocodile is spotted drone, drone goes down to collect the data data was collected from a height of 15 to 25 feet approximately and video clips were recorded in a clockwise direction Video clips were recorded for at least 20 seconds, which involves at least one rotation on the dorsal body, and 30 frames uh, were, per seconds were recorded. Uh, just a video uh, which was taken by uh, Dutch Pandi while our preliminary survey to search uh, Magar in the habitat where we did our data collection. And uh, then uh, the uh, anti-clock, uh, sorry, the clockwise rotation that we did for collecting uh, the frames. Data collection and pre-processing. Uh, data was collected from approximately 143 individuals from Kutch district, Anand district, and Vadodara district. And even in this district, uh, 14 to 15 different locations were visited for collecting the individual, uh, uh, collecting the data from individual animals. Video clips of uh, individual crocodiles were segregated and labeled before pre-processing. An algorithm was used for extracting the frames from the video clips and images per class are represented in this uh, table that we can see on the right corner. Uh, so we had 143 class and in that two class had more than 2000 images, three uh, classes had 1600 to 2000 images, three classes had 1100 to 1500 images, majority of the class falls between 500 to 1000 images. And uh, 26 classes had less than 500 images. So based on this, we separated classes. Uh, the 26 classes that had uh, less than 500 images were uh, used for uh, validation of unknown, uh, unknown crocodiles or unseen crocodiles by the algorithm. And 117 classes were used for test and validation. Uh, and uh, uh, in these 117 classes, uh, the total data was 88,000 images. We used a different data set for, uh, for analyzing the robustness of the uh, algorithm. The first data set had 125 images. This was uh, created based on the similarity scores and similarity scores of consecutive frames was done. So if uh, 30 seconds has 300 images, uh, 
the similarity score between first and second frame uh, was calculated, then second and third frame was calculated, and so on. And uh, the difference, the, there was a high difference between uh, similarity score of first and fourth frame. So every fourth frame was selected uh, for uh, creating the data set. And uh, by doing that, we created 125 images per classes for 100 and, uh, 125 images per class for 117 classes. With that, the training accuracy of our model was 96.57% at 20 epochs. And the unknown, unknown accuracy was at threshold 0.9 was 57%, which means that an algorithm was able to identify unknown crocodile as unknown with 90% confidence, uh, uh, and it was 57% accurate. Then we had another data set, which was a weightage class balance images. And for that, we used 100 and uh, again, 117 classes were used for weightage class balances where uh, the images, where all the images uh, were taken for all the classes and they were weighted uh, differently. And the training accuracy for the same was 97.16% after one epoch and unknown accuracy at threshold 0.9, which is 90% confidence was 56.18%. And the last data set uh, that we tried was using first 500 images from all the 117 classes. And for that, the training accuracy was 99.72% at three epochs. And the unknown accuracy was also good uh, at a threshold 0.9, which is 90% confidence. And it gave us 75% accuracy. So, which means the crocodile images that are known to the model were identified as known with a very high accuracy of more than 95%. And the new crocodile image that are unknown to the model were identified as known only in one out of four cases. Uh, one of the paper that we came across, uh, uh, which was done uh, on uh, individual identification of birds, uh, using deep learning up approach, uh, they, their, uh, also their study was uh, very much uh, similar uh, uh, to our methods. And uh, at 0.75 threshold, which is at 75% confidence, the model was able to uh, identify unknown birds as unknown with 17% chances. So uh, to decrease further, in order to decrease the false positive rate for unknown classes, we have manually created bounding boxes in 80,000 images for model training. So uh, if you can see in the left, this is how the bounding box was created in all the 80,000 images. And currently uh, we are, we have completed the annotation of 88,000 images by creating the bounding boxes. Uh, labeling of images is completed. Uh, we have also annotated the data and we have converted the VOC XMLS to YOLO compatible format. The bounding box that have been created, that are created are now compatible to the YOLO algorithm. And we have created the training data set, validation data set and test and different type of split data set. And we are in the process of a model training right now. So a uh, summary uh, so far, uh, automated method uh, has been proven to be faster than manual analysis with several species. And it will help in tracking focal animal for a longer term. And the developed tool will be convert can be also converted into field friendly app that will help several uh, researchers on field for tracking focal individuals. Thank you. And I would like to uh, acknowledge Yesha and Sajil, the interns who joined uh, who joined the project, project from Ahmedabad University, IUCN Crocodile Specialist Group for the Student Grant, Mr. Walter from Island Foundation and Mr. Lonnie for uh, funding the project uh, for with drone and free, all the field expenses. Shod Gujarat Government Student Scholarship for my stipend. Uh, startup grant from Ahmedabad University for uh, fieldwork, Mahim Pandi organization for uh, helping with drone surveys in Kutch, 
चैना सुमन एंड निराली हु आर माई लैब मेट्स Excellent presentation, Binky. That was really interesting. Some good work you're doing there. Um, I'd like to open it up for questions now. Uh, feel free to put a question in the chat, and I can read it, or just unmute and go ahead and ask your questions. Uh, Ray, um, I have a I, question. Oh, yes. You can you can go ahead. Go ahead, Walter. Um, uh, Binky, this is very impressive. Um, I'm wondering how easy it would be to use this algorithm on other species of crocodilians. Uh, I guess um, the similar way I've collected the data for mugger crocodiles by creating the catalog. If we collect it for uh, other species as well, we can okay. test the model on those species. Uh, we can test the model for those species as well. Um, but presumably, if you had enough um, if you had collected enough data on other species, then the algorithm would work on it. Is that correct? It should. It should. But there can several, uh, like there are several other factors that can impact because just by seeing at uh, patterns on mugger and American alligators, I've seen that American alligators have scutes in a very straight line, which are very easier to mark but mugger does not have straight lines and they have bulkier body so it uh i mean uh the algorithm can work on them but data needs to be created and just like we are using several threshold to fine-tune the algorithm for uh checking uh, for preparing the robustness for uh, identifying individual muggers similar uh, process uh, can be done for other species as well. Okay, uh, Sneha, you had a question? Yeah, um, can you go back to your AUC slide, please? Uh, which slide? AUC, um, where you're showing your threshold, AUC values? Yeah. So um, looking at your um, training AUC value, 57% is still a low score. So do you think the bounding boxes would improve this score eventually? It's like, I kind of missed that part. Yes. So uh, uh, the 57% and the 56% that you see is for a different kind of data set. And yes. the 75% yeah, I, uh, is a different kind of data set. So when we use the bounding box, the background that has been used in the image will be eliminated. So yeah. it can improve the accuracies of the model. Yeah, since that's, that's what I wanted to know. Is that your since hypothesis. majority of the pixel in the images will be the focal individual. Okay, yeah, that's um, that's good to know. And maybe uh, maybe this could be this could be an answer to Walter's question too, because. Uh, this method can then be used for other crocodilians as well. Um, yeah, and uh, another question is, um, do you, did you, while you, you were doing, doing your drone surveys, did you observe any peculiar behavior in crocodiles that you had not seen before or like was not known or something that you thought was like really interesting or different? Uh the one which is very common thing is juveniles get spooked very easily due to drone. Uh, adults are not much bothered. But I guess during our preliminary survey, Daksh, we did observe galloping in mugger, right? That you recorded. And it was a very fine video where clearly galloping was seen in mugger. Yeah. So... Um... Just adding a comment is that this is this is really great presentation, and I believe that this developing this kind of model would be very great to do future population like mark recapture surveys in crocodiles because this seems like a good way to build in more accuracy in the data set. So, good job. Thank you. I think you've already partially answered uh, Clement's question. He thank you. For the presentation and said with these drone heights do you notice any behavioral changes in crocodiles 
And he also thinks you have a very cool crocodile shirt. On. Thank you. <laughs> this, Everybody this is my lucky shirt for all the presentations. <laughs> Uh, were there any other behavioral changes besides the one you just uh, spoke to Sneha about? Uh, behavioral uh, changes? Not, uh, not much because I was very careful and not disturbing them because in India rules are very strict and forest department can stop my project if they see that my work is unethical. So yeah, I would I would keep it to my work, get my data, and get back to my university. <laughs> Just generally in some chats that Lani and Carlos and I have been having, this seems to be a huge variation in the threshold, the Stevens thresholds for different species. Um, Any other? questions um i don't really have a question but i just wanted to add to uh, brinky's uh, response to walter is uh, one of the things that uh, apart from the annotations that we are doing I, I think she mentioned all the types of annotation like zoom in and changing the angle as well as blurred versus uh, more uh, images having more clarity. But the other thing I think is uh, we are also taking some drone images from Madras Crocodile Bank Trust uh, from different species. So to, we probably will have a better answer to your question because uh, she's uh, already flown the drone and collected images from like Nile crocodiles and um, a couple more species. So how does it algorithm works on different other species, we soon will have an answer to it. Because we'll put the same algorithm, but use as unknown a different species. And um, to uh, Sneha's uh, thing also, I, I wanted to just add, yes, Sneha, the uh, different uh, uh, unknown, like the false positive rates, uh, we were getting like really high ones. Um, for the other two methods, whereas a little bit better one for the 500 image. And that's the reason we thought that we can even further improvise it if we move to a bounding box so that the algorithm yeah. sees the skewed and nothing else. Yeah, because one out of four individuals is false positive is still uh, a little high value. Like AUC values uh, generally below 0.5 is considered to be not great, but um, yeah, as, as you're already working on improving the model, and this is work in progress, I'm sure, I'm sure like machine learning has been such a great field, and I'm sure this can easily be worked on. Right, and we, we had like, you know, for the AUC, I think Supan can also add in here, we were doing, we are doing really great in terms of AUC and training. So that is above 90%, like for known crocodiles, it is working great, the crocodiles which are there already in the catalog. But I think we want to reach that stage where the false positive rate is super low because of two of the field sites that Binky has, has migrating population between Anand and Vadodara. Yeah. So the crocodiles yeah. then move from one site to another. We don't want unknowns to get identified as known ones in the backlog. Yeah. But re-identification of known or seeing the known, training on the known, that's all is working great. Yeah, and... Um... And this will also help improving, like I, I'm already seeing the use of this in future migratory capture surveys for population and density count and stuff like that. So uh, having a higher AUC score will definitely be so much more advantageous to uh, any of the studies in future. And in general, it's just a great practice. Um, and I also have one more question to Brinky, if nobody else, but I, I see Car Carlos has, a, has his hand raised. So I'll, I'll give, um, I'll come back later to my question because I've already asked once. Okay, Carlos. Hi, Brinky, it was a very nice presentation. presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, I have a, a, a point on, on the size of the crocodiles. They were all adult or you have hatchling, juveniles and different sizes? 
Uh, no, I forgot to mention all my population is recorded for adult animals since my project is focusing on reproductive physiology, which will be studied in adult breeding animals, since my data collection has also been focused on adult animals. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Branky, I'm excited uh, that you are thinking about uh, the possibility of turning this into an app down the line. Um, and I was just wondering how that would work. Would you have uh, a database on a portable device, say your phone of focal animals, and you would take pictures in the field to compare it to make a positive identification? How do you see that working? Uh, so Supan is working on that, uh, where he's trying to uh make an app which is compatible uh, on the phone. So when the drone is flying and if it is flying on the crocodile, which is already from the catalog, it can give us the match with uh, accuracy percentage. Okay. So be happening real time while you're flying the drone. That's great. Uh, Kelvin and Andrew are asking, yeah. Are all of the muggers photographed found around nesting areas, or is it by chance that they are basking? Uh, no, um, for data collection was done during the basking time, but wherever we saw the nesting sites, we have recorded it as a possible nesting site. Um, I have one more question, and this is more like thinking out loud. Do you think there will be, um, if you look at different populations across the country, do you think there will be like a huge variation in the skewed size? More like this is just thinking. I'm, I was just thinking of different because of such a wide, dis widely distributed species. What do you think would be? Um, yes, there will be a difference because as uh, it has been already done in American crocodile and they have run the statistical models and they have come up with the probability of finding same skewed pattern is so low in more than three lakh animals. So mugger population across the country will have different skewed patterns. And if we find more collaborators locally to fly the drone and get the data, we can probably put it up to run. Uh, yeah, that is extremely amazing. Your presentation and the work is the novel in the country. You're probably one of the first or maybe the first to do this. So congratulations, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. Lonnie, you had your hand raised. Yeah, great presentation, Brinky. Are you gonna try to um, try to start taking photographs of juvenile animals to see if their patterns change or see if you're gonna be able to track individuals as they grow um, in population? It's very difficult to even take the drone closer to the juveniles because but I could guess- you, Could you start with from... actual photographs from a, another camera on the juveniles and then as obviously um, they grow and either get used to the drone or as they get um, more confident around the drone, you'd be able to use both photographs from a camera and the camera on the drone? Uh, so all those possibilities can be tried, but uh, I also have many more objectives to complete my project on understanding hormones. So I'll probably have to leave it to some other interns or upcoming PhD students or master's students to do that work. Okay, keep us in mind when you find somebody so we can we can follow them. Yes. Um, I, I had one further question. Um, yes, sir. Which is um, apparently with whales, one can um, determine the age by um, by an algorithm. Um, so as a as a whale grows, you can it it, it changes shape and 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 the shape relative to other parts. Um, might the same be true of, of, of where, where you could determine the age by, by the shape, essentially? So basically, uh, uh, by the size of the 
whales they can uh, estimate the age uh, it, it's it's the relation of one part of the body to the to another in, in other words you you measure it at the mid level and and as it grows it 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 takes on a different proportion um, as it gets older um, so that one can essentially age a whale um, just by taking a photograph of it um, because they have certain proportions um, younger ones have different proportions than older ones and and mm -hmm. Um, um, I was just wondering if that might be true with crocodilians as well. Uh, I guess uh, me and Phoebe both are doing something in the same line. Phoebe is trying to um, come up with a method where they can uh, estimate the size of the crocodile based on drone images. And what I am trying to do here at uh, NCBT is uh, try to understand their body condition scores based on drone images. Um, if, so if it's you, still in the process right now of if, if you want further, uh, standardizing the method. Yes. If you want further information about that, um, I think it's on the Duke website. Um, it's the Duke and uh, Duke Drone and Remote Sensing Lab. Um, but I think they have information about that there. If they don't, I can send it to you. Yes, okay. they, they, they do. Yeah, yeah I, I'll, I'll, I will check that out. Um, I will just come in here, although I try not to when the student is presenting, but I'm back again. Walter, to add a little more uh, to what Ricky is saying, when uh, we were trying the first time with the image vision, like we were actually trying to pick the scutes uh, based on their contour and shape, that time there was, uh, we were thinking about taking like inter skewed distance or distance of the skewed from the nuchal area. The uh, mothers have like a little bit uh, kind of like, not like gharials, like not really like a um, uh, 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 dome there, but there is a kind of dome. We were taking those distances into consideration when we were trying out different algorithms with image vision. What is happening in the deep learning, it's kind of like a pattern recognition. It really does not tell you what exactly it is reading in that deep learning algorithm. But uh, anecdotally, we have also uh, seen that there is, like if we would have gone a little more further with the image vision, we would have seen a little bit differences between this inter skewed differences across different age groups or life history stages. Uh, Walter, can I also, um, I just want to, like, I, I think your, your suggestion is really interesting. And I think if, uh, this would not like this would involve a different kind of uh, different kind of approach, probably geometric morphometry that people do may be useful. Is that what you were talking about? Um, sorry, would you repeat that? Um, were you talking about geometric morphometry that that was used in the whales to see the proportions, body proportions? I, I think that's correct. It's it's a name I I. I would recognize if I saw it, but I can't remember it, but it's a, a name like that, yes. Yeah, so I, I think geometric morphometry has been used, I think in turtles too, and I'm, I don't see why it wouldn't work for crocodiles. So I believe, I think that might be something that could be interesting and probably useful of, to what you were saying, probably that's. Thank you. What? Uh, so uh, I would just like to add a point uh, because we were also thinking of doing this, but there are several factors that will impact uh, when the substrate of the crocodiles changes. Because if they are sitting on stones, the way their body is spread out from belly and from jowls is very different when they sit on loose sand. And it can vary more than 100 to 200 kgs. So that is one factor that needs to be uh, standardized. So if we look at the same substrate, then maybe this method can be developed further. But since everywhere muggers will choose to sit on different substrates and they'll keep moving according to the amount of heat they need to regulate their body temperature.
Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Uh, also, uh, because you'd be looking at to do that sort of uh, morphometric uh, measurement, you'd be looking at animals from different angles with the drone and their legs maybe angle differently. And the things you would be looking at is kind of length of limbs, um, tie points that you could measure between um, limb attachment, length of the head, and depending on the angle, you could get some variation there. Um, I imagine it would be somewhat easier in whales. You would have angle problems within the three-dimensional medium of the water, but they're completely su supported by the water. So you wouldn't have a substrate that they're resting on changing their body morphology, as Brinky mentioned. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting thing to pursue. Uh uh, Tex had a uh, question. Are there plans for expanding the algorithm so it can use data outside the bounding boxes for secondary verification or other forms of verification? 88K images is a great data set size, especially for this region. Uh, uh, again, uh, coming to the point that I have several more objectives to work <laughs> on. Uh, once the paper is published, the data will be open source for other people to develop any further work they want to using this data set. In fact, uh, someone, uh, I, for I keep forgetting names, but someone from Pakistan who is looking at nuptial scutes have contacted me for the data and I have uh, told him that as soon as the paper is published, the data will be open source for him to look at any further uh, uh, skewed differentiation. I think this is great work you're doing. It's very seminal work. And I admire the way you keep on fighting off the suggested mission creep. <laughs> uh, Brinky, what's your timetable for publishing the paper and, and completing your doctorate? Uh, completing the doctorate. And, and also publishing the paper. Uh, publishing this current work, uh, we are already working on the result path methods and introduction is almost done so yes fingers crossed for submitting it soon so within well, a that's also a question walter from my side so what is the deadline for this manuscript brinky <laughs> <laughs> yes i have to update that <laughs> and also the second question I very much like from Walter's side, what is your timeline for your doctoral, uh, like, you know, degree, because you keep adding new objectives to your thesis. <laughs> Close. <laughs> but soon, everything soon. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Any more questions before this turns into a qualifying exam? <laughs> <laughs> Um, just uh, the jokes apart, what, uh, the, um, this particular publication, once the YOLO model is done, in fact, uh, Supan also, um, like as Brinky mentioned, is the man behind the codes actually. Uh, so uh, both of them are putting together this manuscript together. So we at least hope to uh, get this done early next year. Regarding the doctoral degree, that is something which is an open question for Brinky. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Uh, do we have any further questions? Very impressive. Yes. I certainly am looking forward to it. Uh, uh, two new messages. Uh, Clement is asking, uh, no, that's, Oh, the, they're just messages thanking you for the talk. Great presentation. Thank you so much, Frankie, for such an interesting presentation. Can't wait to hear more about the next stages of this work from Phoebe. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time and listening to my presentation. Oh, well, it's been, it's been fascinating. And uh, we're all uh, waiting to see what comes next. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, bring this session to an end. 
Um, thank you, everyone, and wanted to give everyone in the group best wishes for the holidays and the new year. We'll let you know via the uh, email server when the next uh, talk will be. We're working on planning that. If you have any suggestions for talks that you'd like to hear or people that you'd like to hear from, please feel free to contact myself, Lonnie, or Carlos, and uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. Thank you, Ratna. Ratna, hey, thanks everybody, particularly thank you Walter so much. for support. Thanks everyone. And yes, thank uh, you. Thank you for participating. Have a good Christmas and a happy new year in a in a couple of weeks. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks everyone. Thank everyone. Have a good time. Bye bye. Thank you, Brinky. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir.